Have you seen the situation before election? Now this is the situation after election. People are protesting. People are saying that the poverty is too much. We had the mandate, as in mandate, we had the 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 the, the ball on our court to to rewrite our, our future, to put someone that will lead us well. What do we do? We decide to not. I wish I shouldn't say we. I should say some group of people because I my very self knew and I did the needful. So let me just exclude myself because I know who I casted for. But see the situation now. People are dying. People are suffering. Today I met a man well dressed and he's telling me that he has not eaten throughout the day. And he's going back home now to meet his family. He's looking for a job. You know. So the, the situation is 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 appalling. It's appalling. It's appalling. We put ourselves in this situation because vote for the right person so that things will get better. We say no. Voted because of tribe, because of ethnicity. Anyways, they say there will be protests tomorrow. Anyway, for me, this is medicine after death. We had the chance to do the needful before all this occurred. What do we do? We did not do it. Listen to this man talk. Listen to him. Why hit the Igbos? in their own country and hell was let loose. A lot of people attacked me. Now, Peter O.B. was an option, but others decided to choose otherwise. I have a neighbor near me here. When I told him, who would you vote for? He said, how will I vote for an Igbo man? when my brother is contesting. Ironically, his wife is an Igbo woman. Recently, I saw him. He was looking tattered. I asked him, how market now? There's a problem in this country. The poor that you want to fight for, they are the ones who hate you and, and fight you. They suffer from what is called Stockholm Syndrome where they fall in love with those who kidnap them and rape them. Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, rightly said during COVID, say when things go bad, the poor pay the highest price. But the problem I have with Nigeria, the poor don't know how to make the right choices. The poor are the enemies of their own progress. I want to ask a simple question. Those thugs, that were throwing away ballot boxes, that were carrying ballot boxes to run in Lagos. How market now? How transport fare? How cement price? How price of food? When I don't they hungry, eh? When I, when I don't they get small sense. I want to ask another set of people, those of you in the north, who said that. Instead of an Igbo man to rule, you are ready to go to war. Those are your leaders who made such stupid statements. Where are they? They have left you. Some of them have traveled overseas. And you are here, burning Nigerian flag. You are just wasting your energy. You are protesting. You are wasting your energy. Tinibu is going to be president for eight years. Eight years and there is nothing you can do about it. Tinibu is the pepper soup we all cooked. We will drink of it. Particularly those of you who form the lower class. Because you were the instruments that were used to rig. Okay, Youth Copper in uh, um, NYSE member in Kogi State that was collaborating with a policeman to rig the elections. How market now? You don't get work. Are you employed? <laughs> 
What about those of you, some in some police stations in uh, in Lagos that were thumb printing? How markets? The money they gave to you, the thirty thousand they gave to you, has it not finished? Can it buy Gary? Can it buy rice? How market? Those of you in River State who joined to falsify the elections and rig and cancel uh, voting, um, cancel votes in favor of somebody who did not win elections. How market now? Are you buying petrol different? Are you buying bread at a different price? Peter Obi said that they don't sell bread differently for Muslims, for Christians in church or in the mosque. What of the fake bishops? Fake bishop. <laughs> fake bishop. How now that your collar will soon fall from your neck? Go fall. How market? The money they gave to you is finished. What about Khan chairman that recently went to. Is it Khan chairman? No. Khan representative, you went there. You came out and you were talking nonsense. How market now? Your offering will soon reduce. How market? How are you buying cement? You will find it difficult to pay your workers. How much, how much are you buying diesel? Oh, you think you will use our offering to go for pilgrimage? I hear you. Or go to Rome for treatment. What about those who were supporting evil? How market now? You fall sick, you will remain in Nigeria. The, the, the people you supported, when they fall sick, they will go overseas. What about the Agberos? Those Agberos that were being utilized to traumatize people in Lagos. How market? How market? How market? What of the people in the in the in the in the East that fought against the emergence of Peter Obi? How market? But let me quickly say this. I did that video. Why do you hate the Igbos in their own country? Because somebody's mother was Igbo, you said they should not vote for him. I respect people like Obasanjo, Bode George, Faturo um, Barrister, Faturo B, I don't know, I can't pronounce his name well. Uh, all different tribes, Aisha Yusuf, different people from the north, from the south, from the west, from the east. It was a choice between good and evil. It was a choice between progress and retrogression. Can't you see the Labour Party, they have brought out how much they spent in their election. I voted for APC, for House of Representatives. I voted for Labour Party governorship. I voted for PDP, one other elections. So I voted for different parties. I'm non-partisan, but I selected people that I knew I could, uh, they, that they could come out tops. So, I mean, do, that could perform. I made mistakes in some places. The governor we voted for here in Delta State is doing well. He's doing well, he's doing well. So, but your choice is your choice. And we have made a choice. Let us settle down with this choice and harvest whatever we have planted. I made a post. Why do you hate Igbos in their own country? People traumatize me, attack me, abuse me. Usually I don't care, I don't care. I didn't answer any of those posts. But let me ask you a question. The Igbo man will be the last man to suffer the consequences of economic hardship. If the price of dollar goes very high, he will import things. He will transfer the cost to you who is buying from him. He will transfer the cost. If the cost of diesel goes up, you go to buy things from anyway from Onicha that he produces. He will transfer the cost to you. He's running businesses all over the country. He will transfer the cost to you. Most of those of you who are religionists, regionalists, tribalists, partisan, um, what, what, what will I call the partisan Mongols. You don't have anything in your economy in terms of tribe. You don't have anything. Most of the economy of Lagos is owned by outsiders. The economy in several states outside the eastern states is owned by different tribes, different nationalities. You will suffer. You've made the wrong choice. Bear the pain. Don't go into the streets. These men will come after you. After some time. We, me, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. 
because all the ones Kokori did, he died in the hospital in Nigeria. No person carried him overseas. I'm not going to fight the fight of the poor man. No, he is his greatest enemy. And so, next time you have the, the chance to choose, choose rightly. Po poverty has no religion. Poverty has no tribe. Poverty has no region. In fact, the poorest regions support corruption most in this country. You see your shame? Somebody, they forged his signature, he didn't even know. You see your shame? Okay, continue. On this mandate, we shall stand. He who laughs last, laughs best. <laughs> I just say laugh who now. I remain Dr. Charles Apoki. Whether I'm your friend or not, I don't care. I am my own friend. God bless you. So my brothers, my sisters, fellow Nigerians, what can we do? You know, during the time of Jesus Christ, you know, he hated the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But what did he say? He told Peter, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give God what belongs to God. Let's say he has stolen the mandate and God left him there. So let's just see if we can support him and pray. Because if he's going down, we are all going down with him. He is now our president. What can we do? Let's pray for him. Try to support him. Try to see if if things can get better. As at yesterday, I was dollar one nine. Now today is now one six, and there is to still rice. One bag of rice now is close to hundred. Bag one one cube of maggi is twenty naira. Before we don't even used to buy one cube. Cause don't know how much they will give it to us. We we'll buy we we'll buy a, a a pack for one cube. You know, so we just pray. Let's pray, my brothers and sisters, that since we we couldn't use our our action to choose the right person, it was put, it was rigged. Let's pray, and let's see what we can do. Let's pray for him. Mm. What can we do? Let's pray for him that things get better because as things are getting tougher, we are all suffering it. We are all suffering it. So viewers, so guys, thanks a lot for crisscrossing our channel. See you on our next video. Bye.